I think I always had two dreams. One was to be a filmmaker and one was to work with Martin Scorsese. The Wolf of Wall Street. You never think you're gonna get that kind of opportunity to work with your favorite director and how insanely good Leo is and how wonderful it was to watch him and watch him work. And you go ordered all the fucking sides. Tell them about the sides. I ordered the sides. So sides? Yeah. Sides? $26,000 yeah. worth of sides? <laughs> what are these sides? They cure cancer? The sides did cure cancer. That's the problem. They were there. That's why they were expensive. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm serious. I know. Stop. It was just the best until making mid 90s. It was the formative experience in my life because every day for like six months, I get to watch Martin Scorsese shoot scenes, solve problems come up with ideas on the spot, and it was just such an, an incredible education. It was great, he's also the best. He also has the best laugh, he's funny, he's... I missed him a lot after it ended because I just like loved seeing him every day. I learned so much from him, and that was the best, it was the best. Best acting experience I ever had, for sure. Super bad. It's one of those ones that the experience matched what people like about the movie, you know? I just remember I always tried to make Michael break, like, laugh. That guy's a bitch. You know, I'm, I'm seriously getting fucking sick of you talking about her like that, frankly, if we can be honest with each other. Me too. Like, why do you hate her so much? You've never given me a reason. I'm starting to just think that you like her. Fuck no, man. I hate Becca. You never. I can never break him. He's so good. Like, I could just never get him to laugh in a, in a scene. And then one time I just sneezed and he started like cracking up. I was so frustrated that that's what got him to laugh. Like something I didn't even mean to do. And it was just funny that that's what made him laugh. I was trying for like two months to make him laugh in the scene. And then a sneeze is all it took. Superbad was a great experience. And what it mainly did besides just being very fun and a movie I'm proud of it, it was an incredible like opportunity to get a seed planted in me by Greg and Seth and Evan, basically of like, you can make a film that's exactly your voice and your ethic and your sensibility. For me, it was really important to see that at a young age because these people were making something that really was exactly in their style and it was so epic to just watch. And then later on, you know, that seed grew into like, wow, what could the thing that I want to make is, you know? 21 Jump Street. I wrote the story for 21 Jump Street and created the characters and uh, with my friend Michael Bacall. And I started working on that when I was 23 and then we shot it when I think I was 27, maybe 20, 26. And uh, it was great. The, the, the best part, I think, was watching it kind of turned from everybody was so didn't understand why we wanted to do it and they didn't get the idea of making fun of remaking a, t a tv show and how lazy and like that's how hollywood is and now i've seen that done a lot since in comedies where they're like so self-referential and aware of like like winking at the camera almost in that way and I do think that was a novel idea of like the characters in the film being aware. We're reviving a canceled undercover police program from the 80s and revamping it for modern times. You see, the guys in charge of this stuff lack creativity and are completely out of ideas. So all they do now is recycle shit from the past and expect us all not to notice. That they're in a lazy, dumb, big Hollywood idea is it was, it was something I was really into and then it was amazing because we, we were trying to find who was going to play the other person. Channing Tatum at that time was like known for like romantic, like romantic movies and stuff. He was in like, uh, he was in Step Up and he was in uh, a Nicholas Sparks thing. So he was a successful actor. My pitch to him, because no one wanted to do it. And so I was like, look, women really like you but guys think you're like, you know, like a dancer or like a romance person, you know? He's like, I think if you do this movie, you'll become like this giant movie star because everyone will, will be a fan of yours because he was so funny. When I met him, I was like, whoa. And it ended up being this great 
partnership, friendship. He's someone who I uh, really like, love and respect. And, and also Phil Lord and Chris Miller, who are so talented. I hired them off of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And they hadn't even shot a frame of live action film, and now they're these, you know, big directors. And it's 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 cool to watch those films from back then, or see what everyone's up to from when you were younger, to see how their careers blossom and and how they sort of like grow. Cyrus, I love Mark and JD Plus. I think they're amazing. They had written the script for Cyrus, and. Honestly, it was like one of the best scripts I've ever read. And that and Superbad stand out to me as the two best screenplays I've ever read where I was like, you could see the whole movie so well. And I just thought it was such a unique character. I loved their film, The Puffy Chair. And I got to work with John C. Riley and Marissa Tomei. And it was, I was like 23 or 24 and it was, it was such a great experience. I loved their script but then they wanted us to improvise. But I thought the script was so wonderful that I, I kind of wanted to stick to it, but then they, they liked improvisation. They're just like, insane dudes. And the funny thing about that movie is Mark was an actor at that time, and Jay was just behind the camera, and I was like, if I ever make a movie, I'm gonna put Jay in it because he's such an interesting guy and it's just the way he talks and the way he is. And then Jay became a famous actor on Transparent, and so I didn't put him in the mo in my movie because I was like, all right, Jill Soloway already got him first. But I was like, he had no ambition of being an actor, you know? So it was interesting to watch him just like, now with Jay's like a famous actor, it's funny, you know? It's great. The whole set was lit, so you could literally walk into another room in the middle of your performance and they could follow you. It just was so free and fluid. They were on Steadicam, so, you know, it was handheld so they could like, follow you, you had complete freedom as an actor, and I had never really seen that before. neighborhood and Cyrus came out to let me in I'm sorry I love John C Riley I think he's I don't know I've worked with a lot of great actors and he's definitely like top three or I don't know maybe number one he's so brilliant this is the end I just like think Seth and Evan are geniuses and they have their such their own unique style and voice and they were gonna direct their first movie, and of course I was gonna wanna be in their first movie, you know? And they had written everybody as like versions of themselves. And my only contribution was my character. I was like, he should be really, really nice, but it should be like false. What's up, buddy? How's it going, dude? How's it going? Good to see you, man. Is that Jay Bear show? Hi there, hey. Oh my God, get How's it going, here, Jonah? Dude. What are you doing? Good, how are you doing, buddy? Oh my gosh, welcome back. Thank you very much. When did you get in? Uh, this morning, and uh, boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Dude, that's great. Thank you. That was really fun. I had never gotten to work with Danny McBride. I think Danny McBride is, like, the funniest person in the world. I, I, I think Eastbound and Down is the most batshit wonderful show, and I just think he's a huge talent. He was my neighbor, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, Danny lived across the street from me at one point. And that was cool. I love, I love him. War Dogs. War Dogs was a crazy shoot. It was shot in Morocco, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, El Centro, Miami. Oh, Romania, yeah. <laughs> Romania, Morocco, El Centro, Los Angeles, Miami, Las Vegas. It was crazy, like that much movement with a whole film crew is chaos. So like, Todd is a really good director and really smart, um, but it was like, it was a hard shoot because of all the travel and all the different countries and adjusting a new crew in each country. But I just thought the story, once I read that article, I was like, I remember just reading the article in Rolling Stone, I was like, this would make an incredible movie, so. 
And I'd been a fan of Todd's for a long time, so it was kind of a, you know, no-brainer. <laughs> Mid-90s. I grew up skateboarding in Los Angeles. I worked a shop called Hot Rod. I used to go to the courthouse every day. It was just, it was a great time. So for me, skateboarding really, you know, what it did was it kind of like connected me to an ethic and a point of view and an anti-ethic. It really gave me a really solid group of friends and at a time when it's you and your friends against the world. And I always thought at some, in some way skateboarding and that kind of experience and point of view would be a part of my first film but then I didn't realize it'd be ending up like the complete just let's say the backdrop you know it's not like a skateboarding movie it's just that's who these people are people just understand when you're the young kid and you're moving your way up through the animal kingdom and in trying to find your place amongst a group of people and find out how to belong and it was such a special experience you think you're pretty cool. Your ghetto ass friends. You good? <laughs> you think you're tough and shit. You're just a little fucking kid. A lot of the time, we feel like our lives are the worst. But think if you looked at anybody else's closet, you wouldn't trade your shit for their shit. So let's go. That's why we ride a piece of wood, like what that does to somebody's spirit. The kids in the film are amazing. Watching them become great actors and they're skaters from, you know, that weren't actors, like, there's nothing more exciting than that. This was an amazing first experience as a filmmaker because it now gives me courage to go on and go deeper and more meaningful. And, you know, uh, I think if I had done it any earlier, I would have hit the brakes in certain parts in a way that would have made the movie worse. My whole dream, my whole life was to be a filmmaker and I got this incredible film school for the last 15 years and had this, have this great, you know, lucky career as an actor where you get to watch all these different kinds of directors work, you know, and I got to watch pretty much all of my heroes make films. You know, I'm very, lucky in that way, but I really wanted to wait until I felt I had gained enough knowledge and enough, I would say, courage to tell a story that really meant something to me. Yeah.